Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter, and today I have this pullover crochet pattern to share with you guys. This is the pullover version of the Foggy Shores cardigan that I recently released. Um, and so I had to make a pullover version to share as well. So I'm gonna stand up so you can get a little bit of a better look. So you'll recognize it has the same stitch and row repeat as the cardigan and the same um, cute little balloon puffy sleeves. Um, I did use a different yarn for this one, but overall it has the same kind of style and fit um, as the cardigan. But if you prefer pullover versions, then this one is for you. So it is pretty beginner friendly. We're going to work each panel from the bottom up. And um, then once we have all the panels made, you're just going to seam them together. Um, it has the a really easy um, row repeat. And then you'll be using the lemon peel stitch, which is just alternating single and double. And then we'll be doing some half double crochets, working them around the post of the previous half double crochet. So it's really fun and easy to do. You're going to need worsted weight yarn for this one. Um, I use Line Brand's Basic Stitch Antimicrobial Yarn. Um, so they have uh, some really cute colors in that one. And this is available as a kit on Line Brand's website. So the kit comes with all the yarn you need to make your sweater, plus a free copy of the printable PDF pattern. Um, so if you want the version where you can print it out and you don't have to have um, any of the ads from my blog like in the free version they give you a copy of that and then of course you can change up your yarn color as well so I will link to that in the description and then if you're on my newsletter I also let you guys know when they have really good sales available frequently they will do like 30% off sales um, so make sure you subscribe to my newsletter and I will let you guys know whenever they have that and you can grab the kit on sale which is an even better deal um, and then the uh, free pattern is on my blog, enpcrochet.com. I'll link to that in the description. And that has everything in there. Um, you'll just have the um, ads on there as well. So if you prefer without ads, you're going to want to go to Etsy or Ravelry where that is also available. And for a low cost, you can get the printable version of this pattern. So I will link to everything in the description for you guys. But other than that, this is very basic, straightforward. I'll go over everything in the video tutorial with you. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy this pattern. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. So for this pattern, you're going to need worsted weight yarn. I'm using Line Brand's Basic Stitch Antimicrobial Yarn in the color Spice. And all of the exact yardage and skein requirements for all nine sizes of this pattern are available free on my blog, enpcrochet.com. I recommend pulling that up and following along as you watch this video. And then you're going to need a measuring tape, a needle to weave in your ends, a few stitch markers, a pair of scissors, and then a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So we're going to be starting on the back panel here and all of our panels that we're making for this sweater start out the exact same way. So you can re-watch this portion later on as well if you need help um, remembering how to make the ribbing, but the ribbing starts off exactly the same. The only difference is going to be the length of the ribbing will be different for the sizes that you're making, depending on which size, and then as well as the amount of rows of ribbing for the sleeves and the panels. So all of them are going to start out just like this, and you can either begin with a foundation single crochet like I'm going to do here, or you can chain 11 and work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and back down for a total of 10 single crochet. But I'm going to do the foundation single crochet, so we have two chains right here. And then we're going to insert our hook into the very first chain that we made in the back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through both loops. That is one foundation single crochet. Again, insert your hook into the bottom of the stitch that you just made, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through two loops. And then I'm going to do it again. Here's our third one inserting your hook in the bottom of the previous stitch and working your foundation single crochet. If you need a slower video on how to make a foundation single crochet, that is on my page as well that you can check out. 
And then if you would rather do the starting chain instead of the foundation single crochet, again, you're just going to chain 11 and then work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and across for a total of 10 single crochet to start us off on the ribbing here for the back panel. So once you have a total of 10 single crochet, you can go ahead and chain one and turn your work. And we're going to be working one single crochet into both the front and the back loop in our first stitch here. So put your hook under both of the loops and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two for one single crochet. And now for the next eight stitches, we're going to be working in the back loop only. So the back loop is the loop that's furthest away from you. You're just gonna put your hook in it and work a single crochet like normal. And then you're going to be doing this all the way across the row making sure you're only putting your hook in that back loop only and not the front loop. And you will have a total of eight single crochet that are in the back loop only. And then when you get to the last single crochet of the row, you're going to be finishing with a regular single crochet, working it through both the front and the back loop. So we had one regular single crochet for our first one, and then eight single crochet back loop only, and then one single crochet under both loops to finish the row. So that completes row two. You can chain one and turn your work. And now this row two that we just made is what we will be repeating for the rest of the ribbing. So again, you would work a single crochet in the first stitch and then eight single crochet in the back loop only and then finish with one final single crochet. So you need to make sure you're following along with the written pattern that is free on my blog so you know exactly how many rows you need for your size. So make sure you have that pulled up so that you can see how many rows you need to make and how many times you need to repeat row two. So I am making the size small and I have a total of 78 rows here for the ribbing on the back panel. And now we're going to be rotating our work and working row one of the main body of the back panel along the um, top and the edges of the ribbing rows that we just made. So once you finish your last row, don't turn your work and just chain one. And now in the end of that row that we just completed, you're going to insert your hook and work a single crochet stitch into it. And then into the end of the second ribbing row there, you're going to insert your hook and work a single crochet. And then again into, into that third ribbing row, you're going to put your hook in and work a single crochet. And you can see that we're not working into actual stitches because we're working into the ends of a row. So you can just put your hook wherever it looks best and feels most comfortable to you. I'm just working it around the last stitch of each of the rows here. And then you're just going to be working one single crochet per row all the way across the length of your ribbing. So your stitch count will stay the same as the same amount of rows that you have for your ribbing. So I have a total of 78 ribbing rows for the size small, so I'm going to be working a total of 78 single crochet stitches across for row one. Okay, so we are at the end of row one here on our back panel. You're just going to turn your work and chain one. So now we are working on row two of the main body here and we're going to be working half double crochet stitches. So in that very first stitch of the row, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three and that is one half double crochet stitch. Then you're going to skip over the next stitch and in the following work another half double crochet. So make sure you skip over the stitch, you're leaving one empty in between. And now we're going to be working a half double crochet stitch around the post of the half double crochet that we just made. So we're not going to put it back into that skipped stitch, but we're going to put our hook back into the space that's in between the two stitches we just made. So yarn over, insert your hook into that space so that the stitch lays on top of your hook, and then just work a half double crochet like normal, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're just going to be repeating this across the row. So skip over the next stitch, work a half double crochet into the following. And then again, we're going to be working our next half double crochet around the post of the one that we just made. So yarn over, insert your hook into that space in between the last two stitches, and then work your half double crochet around the post of the previous. Again, skip over the next, work a half double crochet into the following. 
and then work your half double crochet around the post of the stitch that you just made. So it's very easy just repeating this all the way across the row. Make sure you leave a stitch in between. You're always going to skip a stitch um, in between each time you do this. So you skip over, half double crochet in the next, half double crochet around the post, and repeat across. I'm going to work across here and I will meet you guys at the end of the row to show you how to finish it off. Okay, so I'm at the end of the row here. I have three stitches remaining and I just wanted to show you that you continue like normal here. So work, skip a stitch, work a half double crochet, and then work a half double crochet around the post of the one that you just made. And then when you have one stitch remaining, you just work one half double crochet into it. So there's no skipping um, in between those last two there. And then you can just go ahead and turn your work and chain two. Your stitch count will still be the same as it was in row one. And then we're going to work a double crochet in the very first stitch and then a single crochet into the next stitch, but you're going to be working it in the back loop only. So we had a double crochet under both loops and then a single crochet in the back loop only and now a double crochet in the back loop only in the following stitch. So now we're doing lemon peel stitch and you're just going to be working one double crochet, one single crochet, repeating all the way across the row. Your first stitch is under both loops, and then all of the remaining stitches are in the back loop only, which is the loop furthest away from you, and you're just going to repeat double crochet, single crochet, all the way across in the back loop only until you get to the very last stitch, where we will finish with one single crochet, but now we are working it under both loops. So only those edge stitches are where you're doing it through both loops. All the rest are going to be in the back loop only. So your stitch count will stay the same here and you're just going to turn your work and chain two. Now we're going to do the lemon peel again, but this time we're working it under both loops all the way across the row. So work a double crochet in the very first stitch and then a single crochet in the next stitch and then just alternate that all the way across, doing one double crochet, one single crochet, all the way to the end of the row. So the only time that you're doing the back loop only is in that very first initial row right after you do the half double crochet row. So every time you have a row three repeat, that is the row that you work in the back loop only. But for the next two rows here, you'll be working in under both the loops. So I've worked my way across and then you turn your work, chain two, and again, work a double in the very first stitch and then a single in the next, and then alternate across working one double and one single. Um, right now we are on row five, which is just a repeat of row four. So go ahead and work your way all the way across the row. Okay, so the last four rows that I showed you are our repeat rows throughout the rest of the pattern. We will be adding in some more rows in the lemon peel section, depending on where we're at in the panel. So make sure you follow along with that. Um, so some sections will have five, seven, and even nine rows. So make sure you pay attention to the written pattern. But now throughout the rest of the back panel, you're just going to repeat the rows I just showed you. So if you need to go back and rewatch this section, you can. But for the next row, which which is row six, you'll just be repeating row two. And then row seven, you'll be repeating the lemon peel row and then so on and so forth until you have your entire back panel, which should look something like this. Again, the rows are all that I showed you here at the beginning of the video. And then we've just added in some um, lemon peel rows within the pattern to make those sections wider. So make sure you're paying attention to that. So we have all these sections here of the lemon peel. You will have a sec three sections with three rows, three sections with five rows, two sections with seven rows, and then your final section has nine rows of the lemon peel. So depending on your size, your last section will have a different amount of rows, but this is the size small. So that is what it is for the small, and I have a total of 57 rows. Again, if you're making a different size, you will have a different amount of rows, so make sure you check that. 
So once you have your back panel complete, you need to go back and redo the same thing for the front panel. Work your ribbing the exact same way with the same amount of rows for your size. And then you need to also rework some of the rows for the front panel as well. It's exactly the same as the back panel. So for the size small, I have rows one through 49, and then we will be beginning some neckline shaping on row 50. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So if you haven't already, pause the video, go back, and rework everything that we just did for the back panel and do it for the front panel as well and then stop once you get to row 50 and I will show you how to do the neckline shaping. Okay so now I'm on row 50 for the size small and we're going to be working only part of the way across here to split the neckline so it starts just like any other row chain two double crochet and single crochet alternating across but you're only going to do it for a certain amount of stitches so I only have 30 stitches here and I'm going to leave the remainder of the stitches unworked depending on your size you will have a different amount of stitches that you work over so make sure you're watching um, following along with the written pattern so you know exactly how many stitches you need for your size so for size small I have 30 stitches and then I'm just going to chain one and turn my work to start the next row and at this point we're going to start doing some decreasing and so to do that we're just going to skip that very first stitch of the row so don't work anything into this stitch and then in the following stitch you'll be working your first single crochet and then you'll just continue across the row alternating one double and one single all the way to the end so continue repeating that across and then when you get to the end of the row go ahead and turn your work and then you will be chaining two and starting your row like normal working one double one single all the way back to the end here where I will meet you and show you how to do the next decrease Okay, so we worked our way down and back and you can see here we've ended on a double crochet since we have an odd number of stitches in the previous row. So just take note of that. You'll be ending on a double instead of a single like normal. But everything else is the same other than that. Um, so go ahead and turn your work. And then we will be doing the same thing, chain one. And then we're going to skip over the first stitch so we won't be working anything in the first stitch of the row, but in the next stitch of the row, you're going to work a double crochet. So chain one, skip your first stitch, work a double crochet, and then go right back into the stitch repeat, alternating between single crochets and double crochets all the way across. You've decreased by one, and then when you get to the end of the row, go ahead and turn your work, chain two, and then just double and single crochet across all the way back down. And then when you get to the end of that row, you can go ahead and turn your work. And this is row 55, and we're just gonna be repeating row 51. So chain one, skip the first stitch, work a single crochet into the following, and then go right back into the stitch repeat of double, single, alternating all the way across the row. When you get to the end of the row, go ahead and turn your work and repeat row 52 which is just chain two and then doing your double single alternating across to the end so you're just repeating that row and then for row 57 which is the current row here you're just going to be repeating row 53 so just chain one skip the first stitch and then work a double crochet in the following stitch and alternate the double and the single all the way across the row till you get to the end have a total of 57 rows and a total of 26 stitches for the size small again it will be different depending on what size you're making so just make sure you double check that in the written pattern go ahead and fasten off leaving a tail long enough to sew that last row to your back panel and now we have to repeat the same thing that we did here on the other side to create the other shoulder it's just going to be slightly different with the decreases so make sure you pay attention as we go through it in the video you'll want to place your front panel down in front of you right side facing down wrong side up and now we're going to be joining in with a new piece of yarn to create the shaping on the other side. So we're going to be counting in the same amount of stitches that we have on row 50 on the first shoulder. You wanna count in that same amount on this side as well. So for the size small, we did 30 stitches before turning. So you wanna count in from left to right a total of 30 stitches and then join your yarn with a slip stitch 
into that 30th stitch. Again, it will be different depending on your size. And then once you slip stitch in, just chain two and then work your first double crochet into that very same spot. And then work a single crochet into the following and you can go right into our regular stitch repeat of alternating double and single all the way across the row. When you get to the end of the row, go ahead and chain two and turn your work and then work your way back alternating double and single until two stitches remain. Now we're going to be doing a double crochet two together. So you're going to yarn over and in that next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through all three. So we've just decreased working our double crochet two together and then you can just chain one and turn your work. So we'll be starting this row by working a single crochet into that very first stitch and then a double crochet into the next and then just continue alternating between single crochet and double crochet all the way across the row. When you get to the end, go ahead and turn your work, chain two, and then just work double crochet and then single crochet all the way back across until two stitches remain. And then when we have our last two stitches of the row here, we're going to work another decrease. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the following, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And we just did one single crochet two together to work our decrease. Go ahead and turn your work. Start off the next row by chaining two and then just have your regular stitch repeat. Work a double crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the next, and just alternate between double and single all the way across the row. When you get to the end of the row, turn your work, chain two, and just work double crochet and single crochet across until two stitches remain. And then we're going to finish with another double crochet two together. So again, just like we did before, we're just working a double crochet two together in these last two stitches. So for that row, we just repeated row 51. And now we have 27 stitches for the size small and you're going to chain one and turn your work and now we will be repeating row 52. So for that you're just going to work a single crochet and then a double crochet repeating all the way across. When you get to the end of the row, you can go ahead and chain two, turn your work, and just work a double crochet and single crochet alternating back until we get to the end here where we will finish with our final single crochet two together. So for row 57 here, we just repeated row 53. We have a total of 26 stitches for the size small, and then we're just going to fasten off our work, leaving a tail long enough to sew this last row to our back panel. So you can see that the shoulders here were slightly different on both sides, the way we worked the decreases and that completes the front panel again depending on your size you may have more or less rows here um, for the shaping and for the length of your panel so now we have to make the sleeve panels and you're going to be starting off the exact same way as you did with the front and the back panel so here i am doing a foundation single crochet again i'm going to do a total of 10 foundation single crochet stitches for the ribbing um, this is the same for all sizes so start off with 10 if you prefer doing the chain you can chain 11 work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and all the way down for a total of 10 single crochet stitches depending on your size you'll have a different amount of rows for the size small I'm going to be working 27 rows of the ribbing here so I have 27 rows and now the first row is going to be slightly different than the first row was on the back and front panel we're going to be working two single crochet stitches into the end of each row instead of just one so that we can um, puff up the sleeves and give it that balloon look so other than that everything else is exactly the same but I will show you how to work two into each so you're going to chain one and then in the end of that very first row the last ribbing row that you made work your first single crochet and then work a second one into the same spot and then into the end of the second ribbing row work a single crochet and work a second one into the same spot again into the third row you're going to work two single crochet into the same spot and you're going to be doing this all the way across the row so that you are doubling 
your stitch count. So instead of ending with 27 single crochet stitches, we will have a total of 54 single crochet stitches. Once you complete the first row of your sleeve, it's going to look all wavy and crazy, but do not worry about that. It's supposed to look that way. Once we keep going and adding rows, it will flatten out and look how it's supposed to. So just keep going. Um, and then after that first row, everything else is exactly how it was in the back panel and the front panel. You'll start the second row with your half double crochet row, and then rows three, four, and five will be the lemon peel, and then row six will be another half double crochet row, um, and you'll just do our regular row repeats. Your sleeves will not be as long as the back panel and front panel, obviously, so you do stop um, before you complete all of the rows like you do on the other panels. So just make sure that you're following the written pattern and you stop where you need to for your size because they will be different depending on what size you're making. And once you complete your sleeve, it will look something like this. Um, again, make sure you check the written pattern for however many rows you need so you know where to stop. And then if you need to lengthen your sleeve or shorten it, that's really easy as well. Um, you can just add on or remove as many rows as you want. You'll notice that the larger sizes, the sleeves are shorter and they're supposed to be that way because this is a drop shoulder style sweater. So the larger sizes, the back panel and the front panel come further down your bicep than the smaller sizes. So therefore your sleeves just need to be slightly shorter or they will be hanging off your hands. Um, but you can always place this on and try it on before you completely seam everything together and decide if you want to add more length or take away some length on those sleeves. And once you have your first sleeve done, you need to fasten off, leave a tail long enough to sew that last row to the front and back panels, and then you need to go back and remake a second one exactly the same. So once you have all your panels made, we just need to seam them together. So you're going to be taking your back and your front panel. You can place them right sides facing so you know which side is the right side by seeing the little ridge that is created on the sweater and the half double crochet row. Those are the right sides and you want them facing together. And we're just going to seam both shoulders um, from the front panel to the back panel. So you're going to use the tail of yarn that you have when you fastened off the front panel and you can either slip stitch these two rows together here or you can use your needle and sew across. I ended up slip stitching the shoulders together but then I used my needle to sew everything else together. But this is completely personal preference. You can do it however you want and however you normally seam your pieces together. It does not matter for this project, so just do whatever you're most comfortable with. Here I am just seaming them together or slip stitching them together with my hook through both the loops. Um, if you do it this way, just make sure you don't tug too tightly and then don't skip any stitches on that front panel. Um, and then you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. And because our tail of yarn is on the inner side of the sweater here, you need to count in the same amount of stitches over on your back panel. So you make sure you're connecting them and joining them in at the right spot. So once you have both sides sewn together at the shoulders, we're going to be adding the sleeve and sewing that on. So you'll want to place your sleeve um, directly halfway on both sides of the front and back panel. So this is the shoulder seam here, and I've made sure that it's in the direct center of the top of the sleeve. So you can count over the stitches and just make sure you place that stitch marker halfway across your sleeve panel and then just through the seam on your shoulder panel. And then you want to make sure that the edges of the sleeve are at the same spot on the back panel and the front panel just to make everything nice and even. And then you can just hold everything in place with your stitch markers so that it doesn't move around. And then you can either use your hook here and slip stitch across, removing the stitch markers as you go, or you can use your needle and sew it together. I just did the invisible seam method here and I'm just using my needle and I'm gonna go back and forth and sew all the way across. Once you have the first sleeve sewn together, you can go to the other side and repeat the exact same thing. Um, make sure that you use those stitch markers to keep it in place so that the sleeves are even. So just go ahead and repeat on the other side. 
So once both sleeves are sewn on, you need to do the same thing, working your way from the bottom ribbing of the sweater all the way up the side. Make sure as you're sewing it together that the rows are even on both the front and back panel so that when you turn it right side out, um, your rows are lined up correctly. So work from the bottom hem up to the underarm and then when you get to the underarm, continue across the sleeve to the end of the cuff. And then you can just go ahead and fasten off and repeat the same thing on the other side. So once everything is sewn together, we're just going to add a couple rows of trim at the neckline here. My sweater is still wrong side out. The right sides are facing and I just have a new piece of yarn. I'm going to join in with a slip stitch um, just to the left of the shoulder seam. You can do it on either side or wherever you want to join. It really doesn't matter. I just like to do it next to the seam. So I'm going to join in with a slip stitch and then just chain one. I'll work one single crochet into the same spot that I joined and then we're just going to single crochet evenly around the neckline opening. So when we're working down the decrease rows here, you're not working into an actual stitch since it's the side of a row. So you just want to make sure you're placing them evenly as you go. You don't want too many stitches or it will start waving up and you don't want to have too little stitches or it will pucker. So make sure you just place them evenly and then you'll work one single crochet in each stitch across the front of the neckline and then single crochet evenly up the side of the other decreased rows and then single crochet in one stitch along the back panel. When you get back to the front of the row you can just join into that very first stitch you made with a slip stitch and then go ahead and chain one and turn your work. For the second and final round, we're just going to be alternating front post single crochet and back post single crochet. So to do that, you're just going to insert your hook from the back to the front, and then you're going to put it back around, placing that stitch behind your hook, and then work a single crochet like normal. And then for the front post, you're just going to put your hook from front to back, place that stitch on top of your hook in the front and work a single crochet like normal. And you're just going to alternate all the way around um, the neckline. When you get back to the beginning, just slip stitch to join to the first single crochet made and fasten off. After that, you can just use your needles to weave in any of the remaining ends that you have and turn your sweater right side out. And that is it for this video tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.